Hello and welcome to Baron's Den. And today we've got some more exciting news about the world of Blood Bowl. We have another star player joining the ranks of the game. And we have the one I've been waiting for for quite a long time, Jordel Freshbreeze arriving. It says, Jordel Freshbreeze, the nimblest living Blood Bowl player, limbers up and leaps onto the gridiron. Oh, Bob and Jim again. Well, let's make sure I get them the right way around this time. Jim, did you feel that just now? It felt like a gust of wind. Listen, Bob, the pies at the stands today. I think they might be off. I'm sorry, you know my stomach gets... Can it, Jim? That's just Jordel Freshbreeze on the pitch. Let's get his autograph. Elegant and tenacious and acrobatic, but enough about the uh, Blood Bowl gnome team. Haha. <laughs> it's time to talk about one of the greatest star players to have ever graced the gridiron, Jordel Freshbreeze. Um, and he is one of the best star players and one of the most well-known star players. And I can't for the life of me work out why it's taken them so long to get him into the game. They've had so many other wood elf or just elf in general uh, star players that they've released before him. He need literally be first or second name, you know, down for me for the Elven Kingdom uh, group of star players. But anyway, this Elven legend runs rings around his opponents, dancing through defensive lines with ease and snatching the ball away before most players even realise they're throwing empty air. And there is the model. There's elements to this model I love, and there's elements to this model I'm not sure about. Uh, the trainers are amazing. The trainers are my favourite bit, I think. And I love this punch blade here. Uh, the posture's quite good. It looks very elegant and very like whirlwindy with the way that the, um, the robes are moving. The bit I'm not sure about is the hair. I don't know what to make of the hair. Now, it could be that it's just the angle we're seeing the shot at. Um, oh, there we go. There's a better seat. There, you can see there are, like, little ponytails coming off. Whereas here, they're kind of wrapped around his face. But it might be the angle. And actually, if you turn it on its side, that it doesn't look as... Like, he's just tied up around his chin. Uh, so, I do like the model. But I'm keen to see it from other angles. And that artwork is brilliant. I love the artwork. Uh, his prowess often has a violent effect on games, with matches de de devolving further into roving skirmishes as frustrated players forsake touchdowns to lay their hands on the pompous elf. Though few have ever managed to, s to so much as disturb a single hair on this wood elf war dancer's immaculate mohawk. That's the thing with some of the... They're on the right lines here with some of these star players. It's more about the idea of the threat of them than the actual threat of them. I always say that about somebody like Hack Flem. He's such a distraction because you're so keen to try and nail him and kill him and get him off the pitch that he ends up undermining your um, game plan in a completely different way than you'd expect. And Fresh Breeze is another one of those star players who will do that. So, movement eight alongside agility one plus lets him outmaneuver even the swiftest gutter runner. He adds block, dodge, sidestep and leap and a winning smile to provide the complete line breaking package oh goodness me block dodge sidestep and leap with one plus edge and movement eight so he can leap around much better than a war dancer so he's got he's got a plus one to his leap than a war dancer i think i don't he's leaping on a mi minimum of minus three what does it go to or can you be minus two um there's a rule with to do with leap that always confuses me about you it can only go to a certain amount but regardless it means that if someone's trying to stack tackle zones into the square you're leaping on he's going to be doing it one better than a war dancer um sidestep and blodge means he's going to be really hard to take down unless you've got tackle or wrestle um and movement eight means he can get away pretty quick as well even if an enemy has him locked down in a gordian knot of overlapping tackle zones, swift as the breeze ensures that once per game he can choose to pass a single dodge leap or rush test on a 2+, plus, which is why he's retained the Blink and You Missed It award for 318 years running. So once per game, Jordal can choose to pass a single dodge leap or rush test on a 2+, plus, regardless of any modifiers. Okay, so immediately, that sounds great, doesn't it? But I suppose for a war dancer, they're doing those things on a 2-plus anyway. So where it's useful is when, again, tackle zones are stacked or there's a weather situation uh, or a kickoff 
table situation or something like that where you there is a minus one to rushing. Um, but again, that could be really useful. I mean, if you've got to get out of a or get through a tackle zone that's got three or four modifiers on it, you can just use that to get... And usually those are the kind of squares that are... Um, there's one of them, isn't there? Like, if you're moving out of a difficult area, you tend to have one really tough one, and then they start to get progressively easier as you're moving your way out of the net of tackle zones. So actually, having that once can really help you. And also, it says once per game can choose to pass a single dodge. So presumably, you don't have to announce it before um, you take it. So let you, you'd have a go, and if it's a two, for example, and you needed a three, you could then choose to activate this and pass it. So you can you can hold that in your locker until you really need it, um, but equally I wouldn't say it's overpowered because, like I said, your regular war dancers and Jordel himself is passing most things on a two anyway, and it would have to be two tackle zones he was dodging into before it becomes a three plus because if he's got one plus ag agility anyway. So I like that. That's quite a good way of doing it. It's it's useful. It could be really good, but it's not overpowered. That's going to see him doing things he wouldn't normally be able to do anyway. You might argue he's already overpowered. What I'm saying is I don't think this makes him any more overpowered. It's just going to be a very useful skill in certain situations. An inspiration to war dancers everywhere. Jordel can be hired by High Elf, Wood Elf, Dark Elf and Elven Union teams for the bargain basement price of 250,000 gold pieces. An absolute steal for a star player with a rap sheet of eye-watering stats. Feeling starstruck, you'll be able to hire Jordel Fresh Marines for signing photo opportunities and more later in the year when he's made available as an expert kit from Forge World Resin. Mm. Oh, we've got some addendums here. Uh, so we had one of the greatest star players ever to grace the gridiron, Jordal Fresh Breeze, which a title that Jeremiah Cole would dispute. Jeremiah Cole is a golden era uh, star player who had rules in the 2016 edition. Um, and he was pretty. He was pretty good player, yeah. Uh, <coughs> and then where's the two stars? Movement agility one plus. Oh yes, a roll of one or less still fails in blood balls, but this stat offsets negative mod as far as from tackle zones and so on. So uh, for those who aren't familiar with playing with players who have that good agility, if you are dodging into an empty square, which would normally be a two plus, a player with a one plus agility would still have to roll a two plus because a one natural roll of one will always fail on the dodge but where it becomes useful is let's say you attack uh, dodging out of a tackle zone and you had to move into another tackle zone that would normally present a minus one modifier so your normal war dancer would go from a two plus to a three plus or a plus one it, it, the, the plus and the minuses get confusing but basically it's a harder dodge roll to make you go from needing a two plus to a three plus where the one plus agility is useful is that obviously one plus would be modified to a two plus so it'd still be a two plus to dodge. So you can pick up the ball, pass, catch, dodge, all of those things. You can still do on a two plus if there's a ta one tackle zone on it, which is really good. Particularly, we, we forget that things like leaping uh, come into that as as well as um, like your usual dodges and pickups. So that's Jordel Fresh Breeze. Uh, I haven't got his 2016 or his you know, previous to 2016 rule set on me, um, to hand now. I actually have a proper old school, uh, I think it was third edition, 90s edition of Jordel Fresh Breeze's card. It's like this big, thick piece of cardboard that came with the game. So he is a player that's been around a long time. And uh, I can't compare his stats and his value to, to back then. But it seems to me, like, I, I think I remember him having pretty much all of this stuff anyway. Obviously, this is new because all of the... Um, special powers that the star players have got and is new. The uh, access will be different to 2016 because we have the keyword access and clearly this means he's got Elven Kingdoms. It's still weird to me that a Wood Elf player is playing for the... for the. I suppose it's not so weird for a Wood Elf because you can argue that Wood Elves have their high and dark sides to them anyway. So, yeah, all right. Jordal playing for Dark Elves isn't as weird as, like... Um, Roxanne and Darknail playing for High Elves. That just doesn't make any sense at all. But um, I think uh, what's interesting is, whilst at first I read that and thought, oh my goodness me, that is 
an amazing deal for what you're getting. You've got to offset that against are many Elven teams going to have 250000 to spend on inducements? I think my advice would be if you have 250000 to spend on inducements, are you really lacking this kind of player? <coughs> you might be. You might be. And it, and it might be that your regular scorer or your your player with a few levels uh, level ups is out, Partic- and particularly early in the game, perhaps you're you're a fresh team or a team with only a little bit of development, and you're playing up against a much more developed team. You find yourself with this kind of money in the inducements, then Jordan would make sense. But that is quite edge case, isn't it? Really, that's not going to happen too much, and you're going to find it hard to um, to find that amount of cash to spend to get him. That shouldn't diminish him as a star player. He's brilliant, and he's. Very good value for what he gives. But on an elf team, I just don't know whether he's. you're going to have that kind of money. It's like the Swift Twins. The Swift Twins, are they're much derided, but they are great players. It's just they cost so much that you never see them. And they're giving you more of what you're already good at. You know, let's if we look at it again, you've got a war dancer that already comes with block, dodge and leap. And movement eight. So you already have a player that can do all that. Yes, the one plus is amazing. Sidestep is useful. But is he really giving you something that um, certainly Wood Elves don't already have? Um, so, um, yeah. I'm, I'm interested to see how often he'll actually be used. Um, but it's great that he's back in the game. He's, um, like I say, he's... When I started playing a game again... Uh, when Blood Bowl 1 came out, I had a few years off, so 2009-ish. If you were to ask me to name some star players, Jordel Freshbreeze would be the first elf name I'd have given you. For me, he's the most famous elf star player. Even more so than Aljor Sidewinder. Um, it's taken too long to get him in the game, as far as I'm concerned. I think, along with the high elf team in general, the he should have been in a lot sooner. Um... It's just certain players that they've seemed to have taken a long time to come to, to get around to. And we've had a lot of other nice new star players and returning star players who aren't really that um, heavily invested in the law or heavy, sorry, heavily um, entrenched in the law. Whereas someone like Jordell is, he's got a long history within both the law of the of Blood Bowl, but also you know he's been around as a as a model and as a rules. For a very long time as well, um, him and Hawk and Heart Ripper are the two, like he's the Wood Elf guy and the Dark Elf guy to me. Um, even I even think I'd think of Hawk and Heart Ripper before I thought of Roxana Darknail. I know I've got what I was talking about that cardboard um, card that I've got for Jordel. Well, I had one for um, Hawk and Heart Ripper as well. So the fact that these two players weren't in the game was obviously surprising. But I think Jordel's in. With the Blood Bowl 3, the most recent um, Wood Elf. And Hawk and Heart Ripper um, as also part of the game now. When the Undead arrived, I think he was one of the star players that was added then. So these players are coming. But what's really interesting as well is that this obviously won't be part of the known release. They normally release three star players linked to the team. Um, so they'll, they'll be Halfling Thimble Cup star players. Or possibly Old World Classic, depending on what the gnomes get. So he will be coming separate to that. And I think they've released a few now, haven't they? That aren't linked to either a Spike or an Almanac. So there's Kiroff, Crack and I. Um, uh, Skitter, Stab, Stab. I think there's a couple of others as well. So w- once we get up to around eight, you can imagine that an Almanac's probably going to come that compiles all of their rules, plus the gnome team, plus the vampire team. So I think an Almanac is going to be on the horizon. And it will be interesting to see what other star players are going to be included. We know now that Blood Bowl 3 is, in a way, a little bit of a guiding light as to what we might see. Because Ripper, Kiroth, and Jordel Freshbreeze were all first within Blood Bowl 3. And then released as part of the game. That was with a grass double draw. He might, he might have been... Um, spoiled as a player in Blood Bowl 3 before he actually had rules as well. So you can tell if they're in Blood Bowl 3 that the idea is that they're going to be in the tabletop pretty soon. So that means we should be seeing Asperon Thorn, Hawk and Heart Ripper, like I said. Uh, were there any others as well? I feel like there was another Wood Elf. Oh, 
Kernoff thingy, war dancer man. Um, I can't remember his last name, but yeah, you can imagine that those players are on the horizon as well. And uh, it's the nice thing about the Ball 3 in a way that it's kind of given you a bit of a taster of some star players to come. But not always. I don't think Skitter Stab Stab's in Blood Bowl 3 yet. And uh, they obviously released him. And the Gnome Star players will be brand new. So they are going to pepper in new or returning ones that aren't linked to Blood Bowl 3 or the team that's coming out. But nevertheless, it gives you a bit of a, a heads up. Anyway, exciting news there. Still not sure about this model. Want to see other angles, but I love the boot, the trainers. That's my favourite bit about the model. These very good trainers. And I love them in the artwork as well. And I love it. I love this infusion of sports and fantasy. I think this is totally what would what, um, Blood Bowl's all about. It is a comedy parody of the Warhammer fantasy world, whereby war is replaced by sport. So the fact that they've got trainers on is fantastic. And it's not law breaking for me if anything it's law making it's it is within keeping of blood bowl law so when people suggest some of the more sillier aspects like beer balls and gnomes aren't you know they shouldn't they have shouldn't have a place in blood bowl then clearly these people are not aware of the game that they're playing because this is totally and 100 percent in keeping with the game um from a style point of view some people might prefer it when they go more realistic and that's fine um but to say that they shouldn't be doing it like this i think is just not right. I think this is brilliant. Um, want to see this hair from a different angle. Anyway, that's enough from me. Uh, I'll um, be checking back in uh, later this week, hopefully for a top 10 video. Uh, but until then, I shall see you all on the next video. Thank you very much. Bye for now.